Hello to you. This Sunday, Palm Sunday, commemorates the beginning of Holy Week. And I've often wondered as we approach this wonderful time of the year that all churches throughout the world look at the life of Jesus Christ. The world, even those who are not people of faith, are bombarded with the the love, the presence of God's love, and how it is commemorated through Ash Wednesday and Monday Thursday and then Good Friday and then the Resurrection Sunday on Easter. I want you to know that I'm holding in my hand some of the palm branches from last Palm Sunday. Pastor Sharp is a pack rat. I have kept four of our crosses that we made in worship service last year in my office as bookmarks and as a reminder of God's joy and promise to us and also as a reminder of the presence of God's love. These four crosses I made with the children to show them how to take the palm branches that so many of the crowd brought and put at the foot of Jesus as he rode in on the donkey through the eastern gate. The eastern gate is known as the Golden Gate uh, of Jerusalem. In the old city, the old part of the city, they used to have eight gates on the different sides where people could come into the city. But in 1541, the Ottoman Empire walled up the east gate, the gate that Jesus came to Jerusalem riding with or walking. We, we have, uh, at, at Christmas time, we have Joseph leading Mary on uh, the foal of a, of a donkey, of a, of a coming into the east gate. The east gate was the most important gate because it was the road that led up from Jericho, which was like the interstate road of that day. The east gate is known as the golden gate. But in the Talmud teaching of the Hebrew scriptures, it's known as the gate of mercy. The gate was walled up in 1541 after the Ottoman Empire took over the holy city. And it has not been opened again. Prophecy teaches also in the Talmud in the Hebrew scriptures that when the Messiah comes, he will come through the east gate. So when Jesus came up from Jericho on that, on that Sunday morning, which was like the Hebrew Monday morning for us, think with me a moment. Monday morning usually before the virus quarantine and shelter in place. Monday morning, I-64, I-95, people commuting into the city, getting ready, having coffee cups in their hand, thinking about business, thinking about the decision to be made, hustle and bustle. Normally school buses would be running at this time. A lot of activity. Mom's doing this. Dad's doing Everybody going to work. This is what Palm Sunday was like for the Hebrew families and the Hebrew worker they world for them because Monday was their Sunday. Sunday was the first day of the week. It was their work day. It was their hump day, not Wednesday, but it was the hump day to get up and go to work. So consequently, people were getting ready for the Passover that next Friday, Sabbath, Saturday. And they were making their pilgrimage to the temple. Did you know that the east gate, before it was walled up, and it's still walled up on the old part of the uh, the wall. You can't see it. You can see it, it's still there. But it's walled up. When Jesus was born, no doubt, he came to be consecrated after his birth in Bethlehem. He came in through the east gate because the east gate was nearest entry to the temple. People would go and pray outside the east gate, which was also known as the golden gate, but also is known as 
the mercy gate. Do you understand that in the Talmud teaching, it says that the Messiah would come through the east gate. And that's the gate Jesus entered in on that Palm Sunday. It was such a triumphant time. It was a time when there was so much mess in the world. The Hebrew people were a slave people. Their life was uncertain. They feared every day that they did work. Went about their daily lifestyles because they had no idea what kind of threat that they would receive as a slave people because Rome was the superior country, the force of might. The Roman Empire controlled their lives. I want you to know that when Jesus came at this time, over 2,000 years ago now, he came to a people who were looking for some assurance. He came to a city that was besieged. There were slave people. They were being ruled. There was fear in their lives. And I want you all to be aware, is there any difference for us today, this Palm Sunday? Our lives are changed and upside down. We're facing uncertainty. We're looking for someone to come in and give us some assurance. I want this time on Palm Sunday, I want for you to feel the arms of the love of Jesus Christ wrapped around you, giving you assurance. Each of us is like the city of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. We need some reassurance and we need some hope and some direction and we need a Palm Sunday. Guess what, y'all? You have it today. Looking at the scriptures from Matthew's gospel, how Jesus fulfilled the scripture from Zechariah and he fulfilled the Talmud scriptures from all of the Babylonian Talmud. Today, we allow Jesus to ride into your life and to reassure you and to give you direction and hope. He's here for us today. He's here for you right where you are in your home. Will you allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to surround you and to give you the hope, the direction, the forgiveness of accepting Christ as your Savior? In a moment, we're going to pray. And as we pray, I'm going to ask you to ask the presence of God to come into you wherever you're listening to this, either in your bedroom or family room, back deck, or in your car. May the Spirit of God penetrate your life and be like a love spear going through all of the darkness that surrounds your mind and your, your heart or your life and be reassured and rededicate your life to him this day. Also too, I would like to ask any of you who've never accepted Christ and invited him into your life, if you would invite him into your life right now, all it takes is just a moment. Will you pray with me and accept this invitation? Father, we thank you for the goodness of your love and for your presence. For individuals who have begun a faith walk with you a long time ago, but wanting to be reassured, Holy Spirit, come upon them and reassure them for even now. And Father, for those individuals who've never accepted you, they've known about you, they believe in you, but they've never accepted you. Father, may your Holy Spirit fall upon them. Father, we invite you into our lives this day through rededication or through redemption. We offer all that we are to you, for we ask this in your wonderful and holy name. Amen. We have, in our church, secured uh, a Zoom account, and we are going to be sending out an email that will tell each of you how to engage in Bible study this coming Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock, between 6 and 6.45. We'll have time for Bible study. And if your pastor gets sharp enough, no pun intended, we'll be able to have interactive maybe questions and dialogue. 
on this coming Wednesday at 6. I want you also to be prepared for Easter next Sunday. We're going to have communion. We're going to have communion right here at our communion table. And we're going to ask you to be prepared in your homes. We'd like for you either to get grape juice or, or tomato juice or, or water or a piece of bread or a cracker. And we're going to ask you to join us in corporate communion next Sunday. Be prepared. God bless you all. And be reminded also that you're being prayed for and you're loved so much, not just by Jesus our Lord, by your church family as well. God bless you. Amen.